Euphoria in the wake of signals by the Federal Reserve that rate hikes are done and that cuts will come in for consideration. Has interest rate futures markets pricing 150 basis points of cuts next year? Traders see an 83% chance of a rate cut in March and a 12% chance it is a supersized 50 basis points. The 10-year Treasury yield, at 3.9%, is down more than 110 basis points from just above 5% in late October. The wager is that retreating inflation will push the Fed to cut quickly to prevent real rates from rising. Two-thirds of the 251 participants in the Bank of America's December Fund Manager survey see a soft landing for the U.S. economy, and investors are their most bullish on bonds since March 2009. In the past few days, macro investor and Bitcoin Maxi Lynn Alden has released a couple of tweets on the social platform X, formerly known as Twitter, where she shared her opinions and commented on the U.S. inflation, monetary policies, fiscal dominance, and the U.S. treasuries. In this alpha-packed video, we are going to analyze the posts from Lynn Alden and how they apply to present economic conditions. As we dive in, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and drop your comments below. In one of her posts two days ago, Lynn Alden tweeted that the inflection point seven weeks ago was when the Treasury announced that it would fund its deficit with a lot of extra T-bills. The total amount of Treasury securities outstanding has reached $33.89 trillion and is going to hit $34 trillion shortly. Every one of these securities must be sold to someone, and foreign holders play a huge but declining role. Foreign holders in aggregate have kept their holdings of U.S. Treasury securities roughly stable for the past two years. In October, their holdings dipped to $7.56 trillion, up about 6% from a year ago, but the same as in June 2021, according to TIC data from the Treasury Department, released Tuesday afternoon. The top six financial centers, London, Belgium, Luxembourg, Switzerland, Cayman Islands, Ireland, decreased their holdings to $2.22 trillion, down from the record in August. Japan, the number one single U.S. creditor, increased its holdings in October to $1.10 trillion, as you can see in the chart indicated by the green line, but that's down from the $1.3 trillion range in 2021. China and Hong Kong combined further reduced their holdings to $969 billion, indicated by the purple line. China and Hong Kong combined have been unloading treasuries for years. In October, their combined holdings of treasuries fell to $969 billion, the lowest in the data going back to 2011, down by 8.9% from a year ago. During the capital flight panic in 2016, China sold treasury securities to prop up the RMB. It then increased its holdings again. But since COVID, the combined holdings have plunged by 29%. In another tweet, she compared the period where it was illegal for Americans to own gold and how it overlapped with the period where treasuries were a structurally bad inflation-adjusted investment. She also commented that more people in the world have mobile phones as compared to bank accounts to further explain the level of distrust people have on the centralized financial body. Lynn Alden also pointed out the fact that CPI data understated inflation, referring to the Kelvin Home Alone Grocery Bill. Kevin's Home Alone Grocery Bill increased by 177% since 1990. It was a mix of food and housekeeping supplies. Since that time, official food CPI increased by 151%, and housekeeping supplies CPI increased by 88%. So for this particular sample, CPI notably understated inflation. Inflation has fallen sharply, from a peak of 9.1% last year to just 3.1% in November. That's giving the Federal Reserve a lot of comfort, even though policymakers still want inflation to ease more. On Wednesday, the Fed signaled it may start cutting interest rates next year, triggering a big rally in the stock market. Fed officials are aware, though, that many Americans aren't celebrating just yet. Most Americans are not just looking for disinflation, Fed Governor Lisa Cook said last month during a speech at Duke University. They're looking for deflation. They want these prices to be back where they were before the pandemic. Cook said she understands that sentiment and hears similar complaints from her own family. But deflation is not the Fed's target. The central bank prefers rising prices, so long as they rise slowly enough that people don't have to worry about them. Lynn Alden pointed to a more recent happening, referring to the usage of the bank term funding program. I'm seeing a decent number of tweets about the rising usage of the bank term funding program. For full context, total loans by the Fed are down considerably, but the BTFP subset of those loans is up to new highs, she said. Banks borrowed a record amount from the Federal Reserve's newest backstop facility in the most recent week, as increasing wagers on interest rate cuts made it a more attractive choice. Data from the Fed showed an all-time high of $131 billion in borrowing from the bank term funding program, 
or BTFP, in the week through December 20th. That compares to a previous record of $124 billion, reached in the week ended December 13th. The Bank Term Funding Program, BTFP, is an emergency lending program created by the Federal Reserve in March 2023 to provide emergency liquidity to U.S. depository institutions. It was established in response to the sudden bank failures of Signature Bank and Silicon Valley Bank, which were the largest such collapses since the 2008 financial crisis. The program was created to support depositors, such as American businesses and households, by making additional funding available to eligible institutions to help ensure that banks can meet the needs of all their depositors. The BTFP offers loans of up to one year in length to U.S. banks, savings associations, credit unions, and other eligible depository institutions that pledge U.S. treasuries, agency debt, mortgage-backed securities, MBS, and other qualifying assets as collateral. The number of Americans filing new claims for unemployment benefits rose marginally last week, the latest suggestion that the economy was regaining some momentum as the year winds down. The smaller-than-expected increase in weekly jobless claims reported by the Labor Department on Thursday followed recent data showing retail sales unexpectedly rising in November, while single-family housing starts and building permits scaled one to one-and-a-half-year highs. Those reports prompted economists to boost their growth estimates for the fourth quarter. The economy had appeared in danger of stalling at the start of the quarter. There was even more good news on inflation, with other data on Thursday showing significantly more progress made toward returning it to the Federal Reserve's 2% target in the third quarter than previously reported. There is plenty to cheer about the economy, and next year should be even better as the Federal Reserve takes the brakes off the economy now that inflation is going their way, said Christopher Rupke, chief economist at FWD Bonds in New York. Initial claims for state unemployment benefits increased 2,000 to a seasonally adjusted 205,000 for the week ended December 16th. Economists polled by Reuters had forecast 215,000 claims for the latest week. Unadjusted claims fell 9,225 to 239,865 last week as large declines in California and Georgia more than offset a sizable increase in Ohio. Though the claims data are volatile around this time of the year because of holidays, they remain consistent with a fairly healthy labor market, which is expected to keep the economy from recession next year. A survey from the conference board on Wednesday showed the share of consumers viewing jobs as plentiful was the highest in five months in December. The economy added 199,000 jobs in November, fewer than the monthly average of 240,000 over the past year, but more than the 150,000 positions created in October. The Fed held interest rates steady last week, and policymakers signaled in new economic projections that the historic monetary policy tightening engineered over the last two years is at an end, and lower borrowing costs are coming in 2024. Since March 2022, the U.S. Central Bank has hiked its policy rate by 525 basis points to the current 5.25%, 5.50% range, and that will be the end of the macro review featuring Lynn Alden. We would love to know your thoughts on these numbers and your expectations for next year. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and drop your comments below. Thanks for watching. Hey Savvy Finance enthusiasts, massive shout out for being the heartbeat of Savvy Finance. Your support has been the wind beneath our wings and we can't express our gratitude enough. Now buckle up because we've got an exclusive deal just for you. Ever wanted a slice of the action? We're offering a golden opportunity to own part of our YouTube channel's potential future revenue. This isn't just an investment, it's an invitation to be a part of our story. Investing means you're not just an investor, you will be a participant in the future of Savvy Finance. No cheesy lines, just a genuine call to embark on this journey together. But wait, there's more. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, become a Savvy Ambassador. Share our videos on every platform. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Your shares amplify our visibility, potentially translating to more views and more YouTube revenue. Here's the kicker. If our viewership increases, we would not be just growing financially. We would be making a tangible impact by spreading valuable financial education. Now the icing on the cake. Invest and you'll score exclusive access to our private Savvy Finance Discord. Here you can chat with Savvy Finance, swap ideas with fellow investors, and be at the forefront of exciting developments. Click on the link below to register your Gigastar account. You can also find the link to my offering page in the description below. Get your Gigastar account ready, review the offering details, and let's embark on this thrilling venture together. To the incredible Savvy community, thank you for being the backbone of our success. Your journey is my journey and together, we're creating waves. Cheers.